The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Hello, and welcome to the Box Score Breakdown Show, brought to you by Hoop Ball. My name is Adrian Benjamins, and I'm joined by Neil Rochlani. Neil, how are you? Doing well, my friend. I love big game nights on the NBA or big slate nights. I have so many box scores to go through and so many stats to watch on my fantasy teams. I just love watching numbers change, Adrian. <laughs> Am I nuts? I just love watching points, rebounds, assists accumulate on my teams. What do you think? How are you doing tonight? I am 100% with you, Neil. You know, I was having this uh, conversation with my friend Frank this morning, and I was like, you know what? Even though some things aren't going my way, some of the teams I drafted are off to a shaky start, I'm just happy that there's hoops. It's just fun to see these games. And actually, Neil, it's been a pretty great start to the season. There's been some monster games. Um it's been a great start so far, man. I, you know, in seasons past, you see some offensive, like some offenses that struggle to get going at the start of the season. We're kind of not seeing that, man. We're seeing some high scoring games. Probably means there's not a lot of defense in some of these games, but it's just a joy and fun to watch. This season is here. Neil, I don't think we should waste a lot of time. I think we got a lot of games tonight. Should we jump into we this? We got lots of hoops to discuss. Yes. Where do you want to start? <clears throat> um, I've got up first the Magic and the Celtics. Uh, do you want me to lead in first? Hey, take us off, man. So, Neil, I was really excited tonight for two reasons. One, and I don't mean to get ahead of here, but Jaron Jackson Jr. getting the start. And two, leading into the to kind of a lead in here, Jonathan Isaac, 18 points, 12 rebounds, didn't have a block, which is kind of a bummer. One steal, um, man, two threes, shot a beautiful eight of 12. Super excited to see this line from Jonathan Isaac Neal. I own a lot of stock in him. I am ecstatic to see the 18 points here. Fournier, beautiful game with 18 or um, with 14 points, 10 assists, six rebounds, two threes. Um, Vucevic with a nice line here, 24 points, three steals, 12 rebounds, shot a nice 11 to 18. He added a three. Beautiful game. Um, Aaron Gordon has had a nice start to the season. Uh, somewhat of a letdown here with only 13 points, three assists, three rebounds. But um I, I would be pretty happy um, for how he started so far. Uh, not too much else to talk about here. Neil, do you got any thoughts on this team? Excited. Jonathan Isaac is delivering, like you said. <clears throat> big hoop ball guy. Big guy we love. Um, the last one I just talked about is DJ Augustine. Sort of a fringe player. Did have 10 assists tonight. Did not shoot well, though. 3 of 13. Someone I think you really can't trust, though. So I would not recommend picking them up. But other than that, I think you covered it. All right, let's move on to the next team. All right, I'll go. I'll take on the Celtics, the team that, uh, oh, they lost 93-90. I thought they won the game. My God, well, my eyes are deceiving me. How does Boston leave us at home? Anyway, Hayward just played 25 minutes, 11-4-3. Tatum, 7-10-4. and Horford had a decent night at 15-6-4 and with... I'm telling you, he's got to have at least a block. Yes, one block and one three-pointer. And then, as you have always said about the Celtics, Mr. Benjamins, one night, one guy's going to go off. Another night, another guy's going to go off. And tonight, it was Kyrie. 22 points, eight rebounds, five assists. Shot well tonight, 10 of 19. Two three-pointers, two steals, and a block. You'd love to see that from him, especially if you drafted him. He's had some struggles, and now he's putting up those numbers you expect. Uh, Jalen Brown, solid NBA player, not a great fantasy player. Five, five, and three, just two for nine shooting, one block. Um, kind of a kind of a Celtics line, I have to say. Kind of like four mediocre guys and one great guy, and you got to spin the wheel and see who's going to be great. So, um, no one getting too many minutes. Thirty-four minutes for Irving and Tatum. Um, and that's really it, I think, to to look at. Nothing here that really jumps out at me. You have any thoughts on this? Uh, on this nope, stat line? I, 
I think you pretty much covered it, man. Let's uh, jump into the next game. Do you want me to go or do you want to? Yeah, why don't, why don't yeah. we go ahead? Yeah. since uh... Okay. Uh, next up, I got the Pacers and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Looks like the Wolves got the win here, 101 to 91. And uh, I'll jump in on the Pacers side. Um, Bojan Bogdanovic, 20 points, five rebounds. Uh, four threes. We know he's capable of having games like this. Um, you know, it's kind of fool's gold a little bit when he does this because you'll pick him up and then he'll give you nothing the next game. So you got to be in a deeper league to own uh, Bogdanovich. Um, Victor Aladipo, 20 points, three assists, seven rebounds. Didn't have a steal, which sucks. Uh, but he did add a block, did have two threes. Shot eight of 23 is not great, and two of four from the line. So this is, a, you know, kind of a rough game from Aladipo. So hopefully he can turn things around here. Uh, Miles Turner, a uh, lot of talk, Neil, about Miles Turner. Kind of, you know, has had, again, we're seeing a little rough start from him. Uh, you know, he was one of the players we debated a lot in the offseason uh, because he was such a letdown. So let's hope he can turn things around here. 16 points. May have been in foul trouble. It looks like he had five fouls here. A steal, a block, three rebounds, one assist. So, you know, not doing a lot in these other categories. Really hope he gets better. Uh, disappointing games from Thad Young and Darren Collison. Uh, nine points for Thad, five points for Collison. Not too much else I'm seeing here. I actually started Sabonis in one league and only played 17 minutes, which sucks. Uh, Tyreek Evans as well with a letdown game here. Um, so really disappointing game here. What do you think about the Pacers, Neil? Yeah, tonight was kind of a dud from this team. Um, except for Bogdanovich, only bright spot, and that's because he shot well. I would just have to say, you know, I drafted Collison in at least one of my leagues, uh, maybe more, and he's just been a major disappointment this year. Five, four, and six. Um, gosh, Two steals tonight, but really not not much of a line. And he and he and um, Corey Joseph are kind of split, splitting the minute, minutes. I don't know who's even. I mean, I, I think I still want Collison, but I don't know if Collison is going to. I have not. I've taken him out of my starting lineup for now, and I'm just going to wait and see. But I think he may have um, may have run his course this year. We'll see. Um, should I hop over to Minnesota? Yeah. All right, man. Um, Wiggins with the unfortunate injury only played eight minutes, uh, two points, an assist, and we'll have to check on his timetable. Uh, Taj Gibson playing 33 minutes, played solidly, 30, 13 points, excuse me, eight rebounds, six for seven from the field. Great percentages there. Had a three-pointer, had a steal, had two blocks. My man, Carl Anthony Towns, 17, 14. 100% from the free throw line, one three-pointer, three blocks. God, I love, I love Cat's game. Um, and then of course the man Minnesota cannot live without Jimmy Butler, uh, 37 <laughs> minutes, 20 points, three rebounds, three assists. He is a man on a mission this year, eight for eight from the free throw line, the steal on a block. He is as of yesterday, he was the number, I don't know if you knew this, Adrian, he was the number one player in fantasy on a per game basis and doing nothing to slow that down with Wiggins out. I'm guessing Der Derek Rose. Former MVP, Chicago native, 11 points, two rebounds, five assists. He might be worth a streamer. Um, certainly someone you cannot trust for the rest of the season, but maybe you can trust him for the rest of the week. We'll see. And um, not much else off the bench. Oh, Teague, Teague struggled tonight. He did have 10 assists, but just six points on two of nine shooting and one of three from the line. So it kind of hurts you in, in that category. Um Nothing here really jumps out at me except, of course, for the unfortunate injury to Wiggins um, and then Rose picking up the slack. And um, I don't know. I, I thought Butler would be gone by now. I, I have no idea what's going on with Jimmy Butler in, in Minnesota. If you have some inside information, Adrian, please tell me. That was one of the reasons <laughs> I drafted Carl Anthony Towns, and uh, I kind of want Butler to leave. Is that bad to root for him to, to leave? No, absolutely not, man, because uh, we're going to see a major boost from Cat when Jimmy Butler gets moved. And that's the key word, Neil. Jimmy Butler will get moved. It's just when. Uh, I believe uh, Glenn Taylor has said he will get moved. He's working on moving him. 
so I think we might, you know, I, I really hope it doesn't l last till the trade deadline. I hope we see him move sooner, but I don't know. And then I just want to add, Neil, if, um, if Andrew Wiggins is going to miss any time, deep leaguers, I got my eye on their rookie, Josh Koji. played 24 minutes tonight, had 12 points, four rebounds, three steals. He could be the guy if Wiggins is going to miss some time. So keep an eye on that situation. And that's about all I got on that. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I forgot about him. He's looking pretty good. Even the relative few minutes he's played so far this year, um, he's looked pretty good out there. Uh, you want to take us to the next game? Sure. Next game I got up is the New York Knicks and the Milwaukee Bucks. Looks like the Bucks got the victory here, 124 to 113. And um, I'll tell you what, man, why don't I go in on the Knicks and you can do the Bucks. And um, I'm going to start with Tim Hardaway Jr., who's been pretty hot, uh, at least scoring-wise. Adrian, you're uh, stuck. Oh, boy. Enos Cantor has also been rock solid for the Knicks. Neil, I feel like I should have been higher on Cantor just because this team is really um, void of any talent in their front court. Uh, big double-double tonight, 14 points, 13 rebounds. It's a pretty nice game from him. And then um, – Neil Aquina getting some nice minutes, 35 minutes, but not doing too much with it. Only five points, five assists. So not too much there. You know, Trey Burke in 22 minutes put up 19 points, four assists, five rebounds, nine to 18 from the field. I think Trey Burke uh, is the guy that you want to own in that backcourt. And then lastly, this might be a really good sign, Neil, for me. Um, I, I took a shot on Mario Hazonia in a lot of leagues, and I was about to straight drop him. This Kevin Knox injury, sounds like Knox is going to be reevaluated re in two to four weeks. Could be out even a little longer than that. I'm really hoping Hazonia can step in here. Played 30 minutes tonight, had 18 points, two steals, three assists, four rebounds. I missed this game from him, Neil. I didn't have him in my lineup, but I'm really happy to see this from him tonight. Neil, it was a good night for me tonight, man, with Jonathan Isaac playing well, Hazonia doing well. I love to see this. One last thought here. Noah Von Ley has been a sneaky guy in deep leagues. Uh, he, he had 11 points, two blocks, five rebounds. He only got 19 minutes, but I'm keeping an eye on him. Um, and same with Alonzo Trier. He's had some good games. Only had 17 minutes with four points. Neil, uh, do you got any thoughts on the Knicks? No, it's unfortunate. A couple of these starters, you just can't play, though, like Nila Keenan and Thomas, right? I really wanted – I mean, Frank played 35 minutes, and his stat line is just so anemic. Um, I guess he's just out there for his defense, although the Bucks put up 124 points. Um Anyway, yeah, I think you did a great job of covering that. I'm happy, I'm happy for his own, and I'm happy for you that uh, he was out there, and, and he's looking like he's producing. Um, over on the Milwaukee side, my God, Giannis is just dominating through the league this year. 31 points, 15 rebounds, 4 assists, 29 shots. Uh, free throw line's a little bit uh, sketchy. 4 of 6 tonight, 1 three-pointer, 2 blocks. Middleton, I'm so happy I got this guy in the hoop ball leagues. When I drafted him, Adrian, everyone was so pissed at me. Uh, Middleton, 30 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, 11 of 14 shooting. This guy, 7 of 8 from 3-point land. Is that crazy or what? A steal. Lopez, um, solid night, 13 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, 50% uh, from the field, 100% from the line, 2 3-pointers, three, 3 blocks. It's so rare to get a guy who can get 3-pointers and blocks. He's one of the few. Um, Bledsoe, solid line, six, a really actually great line, 16 points, four rebounds, 13 assists, shot well, two three-pointers, two steals, and a block. Someone I was, I got in one league. I wanted him in almost every one of them. And then Brogdon, someone who's kind of kind of an afterthought on this team, but he is kind of the, that glue guy who kind of does everything and uh, pick, picks up his stats as well. Tonight, 11-4-3 and three with a block and a steal. So kind of a good late-round guy. Uh, Ilya Silva off the bench. Uh, I'm not trusting him. 10 and 8. Did not shoot well from the line or from the field. DiVincenzo has been a bright spot in reality, but 
fantasy wise, not getting much done. And then John Henson, 17 minutes, nine, nine with two blocks. This guy is like the energizer bunny when he's out there and just goes nuts. Um, but you can't trust him either. Uh, any thoughts on the bucks? So I just want to say that, man, I love seeing this man. I mean, they basically like Giannis Middleton Bledsoe. Uh, even Lopez, it's just so nice to see all these guys coexist. Oh man, Middleton had one of the I mean, had one of the best games of the season, and Giannis. I mean, it's just so great to see a team that has all these fantasy contributors playing well. I love the Bucks, man. They're a great team. I I think uh, Giannis could win MVP this year if the Bucks finish really high in the East. I think Giannis is going to be a definite candidate for MVP. And that's all I got, Neil. Yeah, completely agree. So far, he looks the part. Um, you want to take us to the next game? Let's let's uh, keep rolling, man. And uh, let's jump. The next game I got is the Chicago Bulls and the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, the Bulls yet to get a win, Neil. And uh, it looks like the Mavericks got this one, 115-109. to 109. Going to tell you what, I'm going to save the Bulls for you. I'm going to jump into the Dallas Mavericks. Oh, that's so nice uh, of you. Thank you so much. (laughs) (laughs) Got to talk about my boy, Luka Doncic. Um, Neil, before I talk about John Doncic, this rookie class has been amazing. We saw Trey Young go crazy the other night. We're seeing good things from um, from Aiton and from JJJ. And uh, man... I am so excited for these incoming rookies, Neil. I just love the injection of youth, and uh, I it just gets me excited, man. I love it. But yeah, I got to start here with Doncic. Nineteen points, uh, one steal, six assists, three rebounds. You know, helping in uh, uh, in a lot of categories. Three threes tonight. Seven of fourteen from the field. Perfect from the line. I love Doncic, man. He's gonna be. for years to come, he's going to be such a popular fantasy asset. I just love it, man. Um, w- uh, DeAndre Jordan with 18 points, a block, 16 rebounds, shot a perfect two of two from the line, eight of 11 from the field. You're very happy with this line from uh, DeAndre Jordan. Uh, Neil, a sneaky guy, Wesley Matthews, has been uh, has had a few good games, 20 points here tonight. Two steals, four assists. Maybe we're seeing a little like renaissance from Wesley Matthews here. This is nice. Um, not too much else to talk about. Uh, Finney Smith played the most out of anyone on the team tonight with 40 minutes. Had 12 points. It's a pretty nice game. And off the bench, uh, you know, Neil, I've had my eye on Dwight Powell in some deeper leagues. I wish, you know... He, I wish he would get more minutes. He only got 16, but still put up 12 points. If this guy got st- uh, starter type minutes, I think we'd be owning him everywhere. Uh, that's all I got for the Mavericks, Neil. Do you got any thoughts on this? I don't know. Did you touch on Dennis Smith Jr.? I think you might have. Did you go? Yeah. I missed Dennis Smith yeah, Jr. Yeah, so I'll just say I- that he struggled. And we've we've known that this guy is uber talented, but his shot is just not there yet in the NBA. Just seven points tonight, two of 11 just three assists and a rebound really killed you um, in that category. Also had um, four turnovers. So in nine casts, so Neil, he's not been that great of a fantasy. Go ahead. I'm going to tell you why I skipped him because I own quite a bit of Dennis Smith Jr. And my mind block, <laughs> wanted to block him out because he's killing me tonight, Neil. I, I probably have Dennis Smith Jr. in like four of my leagues and uh, – I, I, my mind just wanted to just block him out. So I think that's why I skipped over him, man. Well, if that's the case, I'm going to have to skip over the entire Bulls stats line. <laughs> the Bulls. Have, so I said, so back on an earlier show when Dan and I talk about betting, I was like, Chicago's definitely going to win over 27 games. I, I, I'm starting to maybe not believe that anymore okay let's go to uh chicago though speaking of great rookies wendell carter jr is the starter center starting center now 32 minutes uh not great stats but it's good to see him out there four points nine rebounds four assists did take seven shots only made two in a block um only turned it over twice so i think with time he'll be fine 
Justin Holiday played the most minutes at 37 along with Levine. 16 points. Kind of empty calories, though. No rebounds, one assist. Did get four three-pointers and two steals. Bobby Portis has been a serviceable starter with marking it out now. 12 points, eight rebounds, um, uh, and a block. Chris Dunn makes his uh, first appearance of the season. Nah, played okay, a little rusty, probably nine points, four rebounds, six assists, four of 13 from the field, just a one three-pointer. And then Levine has been the um, scoring machine for Chicago, 34 points on 15 shots. That's amazing. Three rebounds, two assists, seven uh, out of eight from the free throw line and five out of seven from three-point land with two steals and a block. If you picked him up, he has been... I guess at least delivering him points. Um, and then Jabari Parker, someone I've picked up in a league and is really just not getting the usage. 24 minutes tonight, 20 points. He did shoot well, 8 of 14, three rebounds, an assist, um, and a steal. Team is still winless. Lopez is still irrelevant. Um, I think um, Dunn is back in. You can put him in your lineup. Carter Jr., if you if he's still out there, definitely pick him up. Um, Justin Holiday, I think is still going to be fine. I thought he might drift off with Dunn back in the lineup, but he played so many minutes. Uh, he's been one of these streamers to add any thoughts from you on my Chicago bulls. You know, I just want to say, Neil, um, our mutual friend, Frank, who's a big Chicago bulls fan. We had many debates during the off season about Zach Levine. I was actually really high on him he was uh, real quick to point out his inefficiencies. I've really liked what I've seen from Zach Levine. You know, last year was very disappointing, but wasn't healthy. It takes a full year to to come back from that inner from that injury that he suffered. So um, I think we're seeing a healthy Zach Levine here, and I'm pretty excited. I don't own him anywhere, but just as a fan, I'm really happy to see him playing well. And then I just want to add, man, is that the Bulls are. They're going to get a really nice player at, in the draft because uh, things are not looking good for them this season. I'm sorry to say, Neil. I'm sorry to say. I know that's your team. Hey, that, that just means I can get uh, cheaper price tickets if I want to go to the games. That's all I care about. <laughs> um, I, do, I think right. should, I, I want you to go to Memphis because I want you to talk about your boy. Yes. Okay. Hang on one second. I'm flipping over to Memphis. Uh, the last... I have is, oh, the game's final. This is awesome. I think when we first started this show, the games were still uh, going here. So, you know, I got to start with Memphis. And uh, I'm going to start with my boy, JJJ. Neil, I want to throw a party, man. And Neil, if you lived here on the West Coast, man, I would be throwing a JJJ <laughs> party. Uh, I'm not even joking, man. I would throw a barbecue pool party in honor of JJJ getting the start. Neil, I'm so excited, man. Um, man, I'm about to go on some crazy rant, Neil. You need to like reel me in here. Um, I think he's going to steal this starting gig, man. I think he's going to run away with it. He's never going to look back. Look at the Grizzlies are better with him as a starter. They get the win here, 92-84 over a really good Jazz team. JJJ with 11 points, one steal, one assist, seven rebounds, 5-12. Not a great game, but let me tell you, Neil, I watched a lot of this game. Not an easy matchup for JJJ. He was on Rudy Gobert on defense. They had Derek Favors on him when he was on offense. But guarding Gobert is not an easy task. So uh, really happy from here from him. Mark Gasol, beautiful game from Gasol. 18 points, 13 rebounds, 4 assists. He ended up fouling out of this one with 6 fouls. A three threes tonight, six of 15 from the field. Nice game. Mike Conley. Neil, you were high on Mike Conley coming into the year. I was like, he he burned me two seasons in a row. I was a do not draft guy on Conley. I'm pretty happy, though, to see him doing well because I am, reality-wise, a big Conley fan. 23 points, three steals, four assists, seven rebounds. Great, like 10 of 11 from the line tonight. Beautiful game from uh, Mike Conley. Shot it, didn't shoot too great, just 6 to 20, but you're pretty happy with that line. Oh, I need to say Chandler Parsons left this game with a knee issue. Neil, this is not good. We know Chandler Parsons has a history of multiple knee injury issues. 
So uh, this could be bad, man. We may not see Parsons for a while, or this could be something that lingers. Neil, I hate to, to um, take pleasure in somebody's misfortune, but another guy I own a lot of, Neil, Kyle Anderson. Now, we didn't see him from it tonight. 21 minutes, four points, um, four points, two assists, four rebounds. But this could be really good news for Kyle Anderson. You know, Neil, Kyle Anderson did not have much of a preseason. I believe he was dealing with a heel injury. So this is kind of his preseason right now. I'm trying to be optimistic, and I'm really hoping um, – Kyle Anderson can turn things around. I'm not dropping him anywhere. I'm hanging on to him. Um, Neil, I think that's all I got. I went on way too long because I had to rant about JJJ. What do you think, Neil? I love your JJJ rants. So <laughs> I, I'm not going to cut you off on those. Um, and the two curiosities on Memphis that are getting plenty of a run are Garrett Temple and Shelvin Mack. Um, I did not see this coming this year. They're not really putting up great stat lines. Sometimes they have good games. Sometimes they have duds like tonight. So just have my watch list to see what happens. Yeah, it's unfor It's really bad about Parsons, too. I feel bad for him. The guy's been through a lot of rehab to try to get back into, you know, get get some semblance of a career again in the basketball, um, in, in the NBA. And But they do have a guy in Kyle Anderson who can step up. So we'll see how he does. Utah. Um one of my favorite teams now to watch in the league because they have another player that you like, Donovan Mitchell. 37 minutes, 14 points, three rebounds, four assists. Uh, shot not so great, 6 of 17. Did get a three-pointer, two steals. Um, Rubio played just 29 minutes, 6, 3, and 5. Worried about his production this year, and it's he had a great game the other night. Tonight it's kind of slipped off. Uh, Gobert. Very consistent, 11, 12, and 1 with two blocks and a steal. Three for five from the line. Not horrible, not great. Ingles, he's my guy. Uh, tonight, not shoot it well. Just 4, 13. Did get eight rebounds, uh, nine points on eight rebounds, five assists, and two steals, and just a single three pointer. Derek Favors, someone I drafted late in one of my drafts, and I'm not too crazy about now. 8.7 rebounds and assists. For a big man to go 3 of 11, that's kind of disappointing. Um, and uh, did get two blocks, though. The one guy I was kind of curious about on this team was Jay Crowder. Uh, tonight did play 29 minutes, 15 and 8. Just took seven so shots, but got seven free throw attempts as well and two three-pointers. And then Dante Exum has actually looked really good. Um, is not really getting much of a role yet. I thought he might challenge Rubio for the starting position at some point this season. Right now, he's clearly not there yet. Just 14 minutes tonight. Four, three, and one. Someone maybe to kind of monitor, but uh, not worth an ad in anything uh, less than sixteen team leagues. So, any thoughts from you on Utah? Just do, 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 do you want to do a Mitchell rant? Uh, you feel free if you want I to. I'm just about to do a Mitchell rant. Uh, just want to say that it's been a, ro a rocky start for Donovan Mitchell. I watched quite a bit of this game. He was, he, you know, I. He was kind of forcing things, going inside when there was a lot of defenders in there, was turning it over, had six turn turnovers tonight. Ouch. Um, six and 17 from the field. Neil, it might, it, it's, you know, it's real early. I definitely think he's going to turn things around, but it, it, I may have been too optimistic thinking he's going to return second round value. So I may have been wrong there, but I do think he's going to get better. So, Hopefully, uh, brighter days ahead for you Donovan Mitchell fans and you Donovan Mitchell team managers. I think he's going to be better. And then uh, I agree with you on your take on Crowder, an interesting guy. And want to add, I agree with you on Dante Exum. Uh, watching that game, he shows flashes of his upside. I think if he could just get the minutes, I think he could be a really nice player for fantasy. But right now... We're just not seeing him get those minutes, but I'm definitely keeping my eye on him. Um, that's all I got, Neil. Uh, where should we go now? I think we have one game left on this early slate. Charlotte and Toronto is the other game that's finished. I believe we have not talked about. Do you want to, to lead off on Charlotte or do you want me to? You know what? You lead into it because I got to pull up the box score on that one. Go okay. for it. So tonight, Toronto is just, they've been steamrolling. I mean, they knocked off Boston. They. Knocked off this hot, this hot Charlotte team, 127-106. They are looking every bit like the East title contenders once again. 
Um, but I'll start with the Charlotte side. Batum played 36 minutes, 13 points, five rebounds, and assist, three three pointers. Marvin Williams just 21 minutes really didn't do anything tonight worth mentioning. Same with Zeller. This was kind of a blowout. Both those guys just played 21 and 15 respectively. Jeremy Lamb, someone who I own a lot of for some reason. Uh, 16 points, four rebounds, um, one three-pointer and a block. And then Kemba Walker, he is just so much. There's no, They're not spreading the ball around. It's all Kemba all the time. 26 points, five and five, 22 shots, two three-pointers, a steal. Uh, Malik Monk off the bench, someone who can light up as a six-man. Tonight played 25 minutes, 10 points, two rebounds, three assists on 4 12 shooting. It did get two blocks. Uh, Miles Bridges had his, you know, this game was kind of a blowout, so he got 19 minutes. Hernan Gomez got 18 minutes. Michael Kid Kid Chris got 16 minutes, and Tony Parker got 15. So a lot of these guys on the bench got a little more minutes than normal because of the game situation. Put up uh, just very modest fantasy lines, though. So uh, my only takeaway on this is, uh, Kemba Walker is the focal point and, um, any thoughts about this being more of a, like a, uh, share the ball, sh- like Boston sort of a team all out the window. Um, I thought the new coach might implement that as a, um, as a strategy, but that's clearly not the way it's gone so far. And I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. Any thoughts on Charlotte from you, Adrian? We kind of knew that this was going to be the Kemba Walker show, Going into the season, a lot of people were really high on Kemba Walker. It was just like everything was aligning for him to have a career year, and we're seeing it. Dwight Howard out of town, um, the new coach coming in with the new offense that kind of favors his style. And, man, we're seeing it, Neil. He's having a, a such a hot start to the season, man. And if he keeps this up, we – uh, I don't know. I don't think the Hornets are going to be good enough for him to be in the MVP conversation because the team has to be good. But I think he play wise will be up there with all the guys that we're considering as an MVP candidate. He's going to have that type of year. Uh, one last storyline that I want to touch on. One of the more popular things to watch is Jeremy Lamb versus Malik Monk and Man, Neil, it's like uh, Lamb getting 23 minutes, Monk getting 25 minutes. You know, Lamb kind of getting the better game here with 16 points. The other night, I think it was Monk. Neil, I think these guys might just switch off every once in a while. So, um, you know, we're not seeing a guy really pull away. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I'm I'm really torn here on who's the better guy. But uh, we may never know, or we might we might not know anytime soon. Um, and then, other than that, man, what's a little frustrating? They got a bunch of like fringe guys that uh, Miles Bridges, Michael Kidd, Gilchrist, uh, Hernan Gomez. Like these are all guys that if uh, you know they're all getting minutes in the teens. It's just like if they would get a starter's role, I think any one of these guys would be a great a uh, fantasy asset. But for now, we just gotta just watch them. All right, Neil, any closing thoughts on the Hornets before I jump into the Raptors? No, completely agree. I'm nervous about Lamb. You want, yeah, you, want just, him, you, want, you want to trade for him? You, uh, you know, I'm, I don't want to trade for him, but <laughs> yeah. I, you got to just hang on to him and just I know, right? See. I can't. At this point, you can't yeah. really get much value for him anyway. Yeah. So. And, and, you know, he's still showing flashes of what we saw leading into the season, why we were so high on him. So we just got to hang on to him and see how it pans out. All right, now I'm going to jump into the Raptors. And, Neil, this is my night, man. Another guy I have a lot of stock in, and uh, Danny Green. And uh, t- uh, 16 points, two blocks, a steal, two assists, six rebounds, filling it up. Four threes tonight, shot a beautifully efficient six of eight from the field. Neil, you know, in my home league where I missed on Kyle Anderson, I missed on Hazonia, I'm, I am counting on Danny Green to keep me afloat in that league in my small forward spot, and he is doing just that, man. Thank you, Danny Green. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, 22 points, two steals, three assists, four rebounds. Nice game from him tonight. Glad to see him bounce back. I was a little concerned when he missed that last game. Just rest, but still, you know, you have this idea in your mind that Kawhi Leonard's back 100%. 
and then you see him miss a game. So I'm really happy to see him get over 30 minutes tonight and see him have a good game. Kyle Lowry, Neil, has had a great start to the season. 16 points, 14 assists. He got more assists today than I think like my whole one of my whole teams did uh, with his 14 assists tonight. Beautiful. Two steals, a block, uh, three of three from the line, three threes, five and nine from the field. Beautiful game from Kyle Lowry. Serge Ibaka got the start tonight over Jonas Valanciunas. And, you know, this is a really interesting situation because one night it's Jonas, one night it's Ibaka. It seems like the coach is going with, like, whoever's the better matchup. It's a little frustrating if you own these guys. Um, Ibaka played 24 minutes, 15 points, had a block with eight rebounds. That's okay. Um, and then Jonas, who came off the bench in this one, 17 points, 10 rebounds, two steals, two blocks. Love those defensive stats. Shot a beautiful 7-8 to eight from the field, so you like that. Um, interesting game here, Neil. Do you got any thoughts on this? Uh, no, Valanciunas, I, I was worried about him at one point in the beginning of the season. Thought he might be losing some of his time and correspondingly some of his fantasy stats set. But tonight, completely delivered and has kind of been just fine this year. I mean, he's had a – maybe not just fine, but he, he seems to be in 20 minutes. If he can do 17-10 with two uh, blocks, two steals, and two assists, going seven for eight, that's just fantastic. So, um he was someone I was trying to target in, some, in my leagues. I didn't get him anywhere. But, um, yeah, Danny Green. Uh, I He's on my watch list. Maybe I'll pick him up tonight. We'll see. Um, but nothing else. Yeah, I think he covered it all. Neil will fill you in on this last game. I just want to thank everybody. I will see you guys tomorrow. All right. Now getting into the late night games here for me. In the Midwest, the three West Coast games, uh, Washington, Portland, the first one, I believe the finish, uh, probably the most exciting one of the night, uh, Washington, 125-124 over Portland in overtime. Um, nice block by Otto Porter at the end to stop the comeback from Portland. A um, lot of statistics point up here, though. Um Otto Porter played uh, 44 minutes, John Wall 41, Bradley Beal 43, Kelly Oubre 41. Someone who I have flirted with before in the past, meaning Kelly Oubre tonight, 22 points, seven rebounds, no assists, shot well, but he only took 13 shots. Um, one for one at the line, three for three from three-point land, a steal and a block. Someone who... Um, these defensive stats really carried him, and then he shot well. So put him on your watch list. Um, let's see if it's just the matchup thing. Did not start the game. Came in, though, for Mahimi. Um, Markeith Morris, 25 minutes. Um, scored 28 points, 9 rebounds, and assists. Shot well as well. 9 of 15. 4-4 four, four from the line. Six three-pointers, a steal and a block. Someone who benefited from this late extended period. I uh, still someone on the... Uh, Sort of on the fringes there of a 10, 12 team league tonight. Certainly delivered if you have them. Not someone I do feel like I can trust on a on a regular basis. So far this season, um, just averaging 10 points, uh, six rebounds a game. Um, does get you a steal on two blocks so far in each game. So that's been um, very promising to see. Otto Porter had 16 points, nine rebounds, no assists. Uh, Six of 16 from the field, no three pointers, two steals and a block, uh, just a turnover. Um, and Wall, of course, had 41 minutes, 16 points, four rebounds, 10 assists. He's always been an up and down shooter. Um, tonight, just five of 20, really struggled, and six of 11 from the free throw line. Killed you in both those categories. No three pointers, a steal and a block, four turnovers. Bradley Beal as well struggled from the field, 10 of 24. Did end up with 25 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists. Um, a uh, excuse me, 0 steals and 1 block. Not much to say about this. Uh, stats are a little inflated on this side. Kelly Oubre is someone I would look into picking up if you need a wing player. So far this year, he has um, just averaging 20 minutes a game. So this is uh, definitely um, an outlier. Not sure it's going to hold. For, as far as... Um, 
um, the Portland side, a lot of stats put up by um, a couple surprises. Nurkic, uh, someone who a little bit was out of favor this year, scored 22 points, 18 rebounds, two assists, four for four from the free throw line. So far, he's a perfect from the free throw line this year. And if that stays consistent, that was his one uh, big downfall along with turnovers and just two turnovers tonight. No no blocks, but did have two steals. Uh, Lillard, 29-8-8 on 7-21 shooting, 13 for 15 from the free throw line, 2 of 10 from three-point land, one steal. Uh, McCullum, I have not seen, well, he looks like he's taking a little step back in terms of his production value this year. Um, is averaging 22 points a game coming to tonight, though. 13 points tonight, 4-4, four, 5-25, four, though, from the field. That just kills you. 2 of 2 from the free throw line. Uh, one three-pointer and one steal. Uh, Jason, or excuse me, Jake Lehman getting the start. Yet again, just played 12 minutes, so nothing to write home about. Stauskas off the bench getting 30 minutes, 15 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists. Never thought this guy would be fantasy worthy again. Um, last couple games, when he can knock down the three-point Shot tonight, three of six. The other night, he had a lot more. He scored 22 points. Um, the eight rebounds, three assists are nice to see. I don't know if I would trust it yet. I would watch him. And then Mo Harkless, the other player on this team that I'm watching, um, just played 19 minutes, five points, five rebounds. Someone who I'm sure is sitting out there in every waiver wire in standard leagues and not worth a pickup just yet. Moving over to Phoenix Golden State. This is a route. Golden State 123, 103 over Phoenix. Um, start with uh, the Suns. Ryan Anderson still getting the start at power forward, um, but not doing anything with it. Just took four shots, three points, three rebounds, two assists, um, no three pointers. Trevor Reza uh, looked like he was having a resonance tonight. He just uh, had a bad shooting night. Two of 12. Did end up with six points, four rebounds, two assists. Um, a three-pointer, no defensive stats. DeAndre Ayton, still your number one uh, fantasy rookie. 20 points, 14 rebounds, five assists. Shot eight of eight from the line, shooting very well this year, I think over 80%. And a steal, no blocks. Isaiah Cannon, someone who I have speculatively added at least one of my leagues tonight. I didn't. I have not started him yet. Tonight, I was worried about the matchup, and it seemed to... Um, uh, Bear true. Seven points, one rebound, two assists. Completely worthless in fantasy leagues tonight. Did have two steals, though. Devin Booker, um, 11 for 21 from the field, 28 points, four rebounds, six assists, uh, two steals. And then a nice line from TJ Warren off the bench in just 24 minutes. Uh, went 12 of 17 with 27 points, four rebounds, three assists, two steals, and a block. Um, someone we have seen be very fantasy relevant up until this coming season worried he would sort of get um, boxed out of the starting role and so far this year he's been um, just playing um, 23 minutes a game ha- has been averaging 16 and a half points on 50 percent shooting so has been decent uh, a steal half a block um, and just two turnovers but just two rebounds as well so not someone who is rosterable, although tonight if you had him, he did deliver. I guess of of these games I mentioned so far, he might be the one I'm most likely to um, pick up and just kind of see where he goes as he's done it before and is getting um, some minutes, and they played at a pretty good pace. Okay, on to the last game of the night, just finishing up the Lakers fall to the San Antonio Spurs in overtime. Scores we have not seen the likes of for a while. 143-142, LeBron James misses two free throws down the stretch and the last shot of the game. Um, However, statistically, he still had a great night. 32 points, eight rebounds, four assists, a block, a steal. And um, eight of 11 from the line. Uh, 11 from 25 from the field. Not a great night shooting. A steal and a block. Like I said, Kuzma, the guy who lit it up tonight with 37 points, eight rebounds, three assists, 15 for 25 shooting, zero steals and one block. However, if I had to pick between him and Josh Hart, I'd much rather have Josh Hart going forward. It looks like 
po- Caldwell Pope is done at the uh, two position. It's all Hart going forward. 39 minutes for Hart, 20 points, 10 rebounds, an assist, 8 of 13 shooting, two steals, no blocks. If Josh Hart is somehow still in your league or on your way for wire, pick him up um, immediately along with JaVale McGee, another player who has been delivering um, – Great return so far, and just 28 minutes fouled out in this game. And as the overtime began, 16 points, eight rebounds, and assists, uh, seven for 13 shooting, free throw shooting not bad, two of three, a steal and a block has been a monster in both field goal percentage and block so far. Lonzo Ball gets a start, goes 14, six and seven, five and nine shooting, a steal, three out of seven from the three point land. Something. This is kind of what I expected him by midseason form, if not earlier, once he got healthy again, and he seems just fine. I don't know what it's going to be like when Rondo gets out of suspension, but um, uh, I would wait and see on Lonzo. In Kuzma, I would not trade for if someone tries to offer him to you as he will lose his starting position after another game or so. Or excuse me, after another three games. And um, if he doesn't shoot well, this this line looks a whole lot different. Um Anyway, on San Antonio, the winning side, uh, Dante Cunningham uh, getting a start on 29 minutes. Did not really produce much, though, to talk about except for the two blocks and 12 rebounds. Rudy Gay looks pretty decent out there. Uh, tonight played 33 minutes, 16 points, six rebounds, two assists. Very efficient, seven of eight, and a steal and a block. Marcus Aldridge, um, monster line of the night, maybe 37 points, 10 rebounds, five assists, 13 of 22 shooting. Although his free throw shooting was um, not so great. 11 of 18, a steal and a block. Brent Forbes, point guard for San Antonio, only gets one assist, even though the team scored 130-some-odd points. That is so unbelievable. Um, anyway, um, certainly one thing I can take away from this game is do not add Brent Forbes if a team scores excuse me, 143 points and he only gets one assist. Oh, gosh. I uh, can't imagine in a more uh, normal scoring game that he would be fantasy relevant. Tonight he did go 6 of 14 shooting, which got him 16 points. Otherwise, he really didn't do anything, statistically speaking. DeRozan um, looking like the uh, 1A, if not 1B, in San Antonio. 32 points, 8 rebounds, 14 assists. It's just amazing. Um, did struggle from the field though. 11, 29, eight of nine from three point land. Two, I mean, excuse me from the free throw. Eight of nine from, uh, from the free throw line, uh, two steal, two, three pointers, a steal on a block. Sorry. I am tired. And Patty Mills, uh, with a game winner or the game go ahead shot. That was eventually the game winner. 12 points, two rebounds, three assists, not much here, even though in 31 minutes, Bellinelli off the bench did score 15 points in just 23 minutes. Only thing to take away from here is Brent Forbes. If you were thinking about, if you have him on your roster, um, I would feel free to depart him now, despite the 16 points tonight. He played 37 minutes and didn't really do anything else. Uh, Dante Cunningham is not worth an ad. Um, LaMarcus Aldridge and DeMar DeRozan are the two, um, primary guys there i think they're going to have strong value throughout the season maybe certainly in the top 30 for both of them let's go over to um see if there's anything to learn from the uh the laker side other than i already talked about um yeah caldwell pope unfortunately if you drafted him i don't think he's worth holding on to anymore uh ball if you have him definitely start him for the next game Next two games, excuse me, as Rondo's out and then wait and see. McGee is a must start. Um, and then LeBron uh, was having a great night until sort of down the stretch, just had uh, two possessions there. Although he was the one who knocked the three pointer to get it into overtime. Anyway, that is our box score breakdown for the evening of October 22nd, 2018 games. We will be back on tomorrow night adrian and myself please follow the two of us on twitter and ask us any questions you may have or just uh scream at us that's that's nice too any attention is is good attention they say um he is at adrian benjamins i am at ball with neil n-e-i-l hopefully the rest part the first part is easy to understand and uh we'll see you guys tomorrow night have a great evening thank you
This has been a Hoop Ball presentation.